The Northeastern Parliamentary Group demands urgent action, urgent government attention, and action in the wake of the Lino floods. The representative of the members of the Northeastern Parliamentary Group, we had a meeting yesterday to discuss the emerging crisis of El Nino. And uh, we decided to have uh, this press brief today, pass on to the resolutions that we made yesterday. So I'll read a, a brief statement on behalf of uh, uh, including Tana River. So press statement, Northeastern Parliamentary Group. The Northeastern Parliamentary Group demands urgent action, urgent government attention, and action in the wake of the Lino floods. We, the members of the Northeastern <coughs> Parliamentary Group, have convened an emergency session today to address the escalating humanitarian crisis caused by the devastating effects of the ongoing El Nino rains in the region that continue to wreak havoc and inflict pain on the communities across the wider region. The growing impact, the, the growing impact came after the first region started <coughs> receiving El Nino rains earlier than most part of the country experiencing the same, making it the worst heat area as the longest in suffering the Lino effects. It is therefore noted that our people are bearing the, the painful brunt in this unprecedented crisis as the region grapples with the severe impact of the ongoing floods that is experienced immediately after the long season of drought and famine. You are aware that recently, just some few months ago, we have had serious drought in that particular region. The relentless rays have resulted in massive destruction of critical infrastructures. You have seen what happened to the main road between Gariza and Mwingi. Displacement of communities and a looming humanitarian crisis that demonstrates, that demands the immediate attention and action by the government. All major towns and villages have been marooned by the floods making the expansive region completely cut off from the rest of the country after, after vital entry roads being, uh, entry roads being unprecedentedly swept off at Madogash, Kutulu, and most recently yesterday, that is the uh, Tula Bridge that links Gariza to Nairobi. Suffering simple, suffering similar fate and rendering the whole region conspicuously inaccessible by road. To make matter worse, apart from OJ Airport, almost all airstrips in the three counties are completely uh, not usable. None of them actually is functional and completely shut down due to the intensity of the floods. <coughs> the prevailing situation grants airdrops as the only way to avail food to the displaced flood victims. Though this Red Cross that has been engaged in this doesn't have the capacity, and therefore we are appealing to the Kenya Defense Forces and uh, UN agencies like the World Food Program to chip in. So far, thousands of families have been displaced <coughs> by the raging waters, with the retreating situation forcing people to seek alternative shelters in makeshift structures on high grounds. The same scenario has seen thousands of livestock that have survived the long droughts uh, being swept away, <coughs> denting serious damage to the livelihood of most of the residents of these particular areas. The pervasive preference of the waters has characteristically transformed the region to a potential soft spot, breeding ground and a home for waterborne diseases and vector-borne diseases including cholera and malaria. The, most of the health facilities are non-functional and therefore provisional medical, medical service right now is completely out of reach of most of the people. In painting the grim picture of the situation, the sky reality remains that the three counties of Wajia, actually the four counties of, of uh, Mandera, Wajia, Gariza and Tana River are staring at starvation if quick action and Contingency measures are not executed, especially with the underlying developable state of infrastructure to support the delivery of food relief and other supplies to the victims. More disturbing reports from the ground have raised 
the red flags on increased food shortages and lack of adequate shelter to the affected families, the most vulnerable being women, children, and the elderly. With military precision in tightening up all loose ends to arrest the crisis, therefore the situation calls for immediate action and comprehensive intervention to alleviate the suffering of the affected population. It remains painful and more disturbing that this type, this, despite the quantum and the magnitude of the calamity, all our individual and collective efforts to seek the attention of those who are in charge has generally remained unattended to. We therefore continue to call on the government to swiftly design all applicable mechanisms needed as a matter of priority to avert loss of lives and mitigate the long-term effects of this humanitarian crisis. As a matter of extreme urgency, we implore the government to act on the following strategies. First, declare the Illino rains and floods as a national disaster. To date, what we have been seeing is just lip service. We are yet to see any meaningful, well-collaborated, well-coordinated action from the government. And therefore, this remains our unified call for the government action to incorporate the support of all relevant strategic players to upscale capacity and improve coordination among state agencies, non-governmental organizations, the donor community, and the wider Kenyan public. Two, we are also asking the government to immediately deploy emergency relief, to avail emergency relief. The government to urgently expedite the deployment of emergency relief supplies, including food, clean water, medical aid, and shelter to the affected families. Three, evacuation and temporary shelter. Since most areas are flooded, we're asking the government to assist in measures to evacuate the vulnerable population to several locations. Four, infrastructure and rehabilitation. We call upon the government to allocate resources as a matter of urgency to rehabilitate the damaged in infrastructure, including the roads, the bridges, the health centers, schools to enhance the flow of, of, uh, of uh, the necessary assistance to the people in that particular region. Five, public health measures to prevent the outbreak of waterborne diseases and other uh, vector-related diseases. We urge the government to provide adequate medical facilities to the affected towns and villages. Six, community support and resettlement. We are also asking the government to provide urgent assistance for the households to rebuild their lives, including financial assistance, livelihood support, and plan for sustainable resettlement. And seven, we need the government to decisively, decisively act in order to save lives and the properties of these communities who have been affected by the Illino floods. We are staring at a situation whereby the residents of Northeastern and also parts of Northern Kenya will starve to death because of lack of food. I compare this to a situation that is happening internationally. You have seen trucks of food at Rava crossing. They can't reach Gaza. This is what's going to happen now in uh, Northeastern. Trucks cannot reach the people of Northeastern. And that now will lead to starvation. The near non-existent infrastructure in terms of roads have been swept. We don't have roads in the first place. So the ones that look like roads have been swept. We don't have bridges. And the government is unable to declare this as a natural disaster. Now, we, the leadership, actually want to declare that there is a national disaster on behalf of the government because they have failed to do so. So with this, we are appealing to the international community, especially UN uh, organizations like World Food Program, to step in and cap in. We can't wait for government to declare when people are going to die. Health facilities have closed a long time ago because there are no drugs. They can't reach. Last night, there was issue of Kemsa saying we are, we, we are procuring ABCD. How can they reach the people of uh, Northeastern Northern Kenya? So as we speak for the people of Northeastern and Northern Kenya, today we declare that there is a national disaster 
in terms of El Nino. So we ask the international community please to step in. We have seen our deputy president visiting uh, other places. He has not stepped in or visited Northeastern just to see what the situation is. We ask him also, because he is the one coordinating and bow of the Kenya government, to go and visit those places so they can get first hand experience. The people are going to die. And then we are going to now come back and say, oh, what, what have we done? So we implore the people. And also the, 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 the media. You're not covering also as much as uh, you're covering in other places. You're also neglecting Northeastern people. You are, you are covering places where there are roads, there are bridges, so many things. But this time, there are no bridges, no roads. Nothing can reach. You are also covering also in, just in urban areas. Please go also and, and, and cover how the people are suffering on the ground. So you can, you can depict and tell the, the Kenyan people, the Kenyan government, and the world what is happening. So we can get help. The county governments are trying their best. This is not the scope and the mandate of the country government. They cannot cope, they can't do it. We want the national government to, to, to assist. They are given 15%. We are looking for the 85% of the national uh, budget. Where is it? So we also don't want to, lump, to blush or blast the county governments who have only 15%. Where is the 85% that is supposed to also help the people of Northeastern Northern Kenya? We are actually angry, we are devastated, and uh, we are not going to clap anymore. Mr. Deputy President, you have been given the mandate and task to coordinate, go and visit Garissa, Wajia, Mandera, Turkana, other places, and, and Tana River, and see what is happening on the ground. We commend the efforts of uh, Kenya Red Cross and also Kenya Defense Forces because they have also deployed some of their aircrafts. But it's not enough. Kenya power, there's power blackout in Mandera. They can't even uh, uh, drop fuel to their power stations. Others are going to be in blackout very soon because there's no, there's no fuel, because we depend on the generators. If Northeastern was at par with all other parts of Kenya, we not have had this problem. El Nino will have come, no problem. Trucks will have gone. Aircrafts will have landed in airstrips, no problem. But there's no infrastructure. It is zero, nil. And our hope is that before the end of this term of this government, of His Excellency the President Ruto, at least we hope that the road from Garissa will reach all the way to Mandera. Our greatest problem is infrastructure. And it's been a lip service, uh, governments after governments, that is going to be done. Nothing has been done. So that is it, and I think uh, you have heard the message. We will give it to my other colleagues. Waterborne diseases have already set in. Mothers who have delivered cannot even get porridge. Power stations have, have shut down because there's no fuel. Not just in Mandera, all of them. And it's as if nothing has happened in our country here. Two million, the lives of over two million people are at risk. In the biggest or the worst, what do you call uh, El Nino that we have seen, at least in my, in my, in my, in my, in all that I can recollect myself and remember. And I'm not a young man. And our government is mom. It's just sitting there. Whenever the disasters of this nature, anywhere in the world, including the most developed countries. The economy of Florida as a state in the U.S. is more than 10 times the economy of Kenya. And whenever there's a, things like that, floods, hurricanes, typhoons, the Federal Emergency Management Agency of the U.S. steps in. President of this, from Washington, D.C. goes there to see how it's going. Coordination. The biggest economies in the world, when they have an earthquake, the whole world, they, they make an appeal to the whole world. We haven't made an appeal right now to the globe. This disaster is of, of a magnitude that even Kenya government cannot copy it on its own without the support of the international community. Why 
are people not talking about it? Why is this government sitting on it? Very, very happy. So we're calling on the government as a matter of emergency, an agency, to immediately declare the national disaster in here and ask, make an appeal, a flash appeal to the international community. They need air droppings. Food has got to be dropped from there. Massive helicopters which can transport 10 tons, more than 10 tons, must be deployed. Two million people who do not have their livelihood is not a small number. I know we have a prob we'll have a problem dealing with it alone as a country, but I think with the international community coming on board, we shall be in a position to save lives and try and mitigate the effects of this disaster right now. So ours is just to say, where is the government? Where is the Kenya government? Where is it missing in? It's missing. It's missing out. When its own people, its own citizens, who have been marginalized institutionally, institutional government guided marginalization for 70 years or 60 years since independence, when we don't even have more than 100 miles of tarmac in the whole of that region. And everywhere else, tarmac goes all the way to the farms of people and homes of people. And again, this happens in the very least in the past. This appeal used to be done, and the international community used to come in and try and support us. And the people, you know, you, you save lives. So ours right now is to say, move with the speed. Move, Mr. President. Mr. President Ruto, move with the speed. This is the biggest litmus test for your own administration. And rein in your deputy president. Let him understand he's there, a heartbeat away from the presidency of this country. Go for, God forbid, but if anywhere, anything were to happen to President Ruto, he steps in there. But the way he's talking right now is not befitting of a person of that kind of a leadership. So we want to see results. And when we talk like that tough, it's because of the pains that are there. The uh, situation is very dire. In Tana River County, it is a gateway to the whole of northern Kenya. There is two major roads connecting from Mombasa to Garissa, to the rest of northern Kenya, and one heading from Nairobi to Garissa. As we speak today, there is a bridge in areas in Tula between Garissa and Bangal. Between Garissa and Bangal. That is, a that is a bridge and a road that was connecting the northern Kenya to the rest of the republic. Today, it is impossible. And uh, I don't know. For Mandera, Wajia, they have been in this situation for the longest time, now 14, 15 days. Have more than, more, than, more than two weeks, three weeks. But for us, that road has been the only solace, the only hope to Garissa and, 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 and its neighboring uh, areas. Again, there is a junction, there is a bridge in a place called Dukanotu near Charidende within my constituency. A section of a road that leads, that connects Mombasa to, to, to Garissa, which is now also impassable, completely washed off. And it is at this juncture that I want to caution Kenha, because there are acts of God that cannot be foreseen, and there are things that can be foreseen, planned, and properly uh, mitigated. We have been to the offices as Tana River leaders complaining of situations of those bridges. Now, the, 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 the contractor has just left work, uh, from the site, I think a year ago. But now, there is no even a single, uh, 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 any, any proof to show that any works were done there. I want to put them on notice because I completely associate these kind of uh, disasters to poor workmanship from contractors who always do work on that section. So I want to appeal and appeal to the national government and the county government, specifically Tana River County Governor, is not doing the much he was supposed to do. Tana River County Governor is not doing the much that he was supposed to do. He is a no. county governor for all the residents of Tana River, Tana River uh, people. But he's not doing that. We want to appeal to the national government also to come in. Because today, even if you give me food, I don't know which areas to take to. Because unless uh, lifting is done, I cannot even make sure that that food uh, supplies reaches to my area. 
So we want to appeal to the government to ensure that their voice of the northern leaders and Tana River leaders and then uh, other areas that are affected are heard and properly uh, articulated. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. More radio, 88.2 FM. We are in charge.